Alright, it's Henry again, and today I'm going to be doing a kind of a unique tutorial for you guys. And this is something that you're probably not going to see done every day. So, uh, what I'm going to be doing is basically recasting beam effect parts in clear resin. And uh, what kind of inspired me to want to do this is, uh, for those of you who have built or seen Master Grade Sazabi, the beam effect parts were molded in clear green. I've obviously painted them yellow, but uh, for some reason that I still cannot figure out, Bandai molded the beam effect parts on Master Grade Sazabi in clear green, even though they're yellow in the movie, yellow on every other Sazabi model kit. So I just I can't figure it out, and it's. You can't paint clear yellow on top of clear green. It's just it's still going to be clear green. That's just not the way clear paint works. So there is, however, a way to get around that. If you have resin casting in your resume, then you have the option of recasting the parts in clear yellow resin. All right. So here I did my master grade Sazabi back in 2010. I was still using spray cans back then, but I did kind of a gradient. I mean, I actually think it looks pretty nice. Got kind of a white down at the bottom, then fading into light yellow, then yellow, then kind of a yellow orange, and then orange at the tip. I did that for the beam sabers and beam tomahawk as well. And like I said, I think it looks pretty nice, but it's not clear. And uh, this just, you know, solid opaque, you can't see through it. So we're going to fix that. Here I've got. Clear Resin. This is a Lumalite brand, same brand that I use for my normal resin casting. And this is what we're going to be using to cast some clear beam effect parts. And the good thing about this, I mean, you don't have to use Sazabi. If you want any beam effect part, you know, a beam shield maybe, or just a normal beam saber blade in whatever color you can imagine, uh, this is an effective way to make different clear colors of beam effect parts. So let's go ahead and get started with the mold making. Now, the beginning of the process is exactly the same as when you're doing a normal resin cast. So I'm not going to bother going over all these specific details. Uh, you can, if you want to see those, you can just go back and watch my uh, resin casting tutorial. So here I've uh, made a mold box out of Legos. I've laid the clay out in the bottom, and I've pressed the beam effect parts flat against the clay. And I've punched out some location holes to help keep the mold stable uh, when I get both halves together. Now you may be wondering why did I leave the handle on that beam saber? Well, one of the things I'm going to need it for uh, the kit doesn't come with a handle, so I need the whole thing, but that's besides the point. Trust me, it'll look good, it'll look good when I'm done with it. So, I've only got one beam saber in there because uh, both beam sabers are identical. There's no use having both of them taking up space in the mold, or I can just mold the same one twice. And this is going to be the top of the mold, so I'll be pouring in the resin from this direction. It'll be going down here. And it's a very wide mold, but it's going to, just because they're beam effect parts, it's going to be very, very flat. So hopefully this will uh, kind of conserve my silicone use, which is something I really like to do because silicone is the most expensive part of the resin casting process. So we've got the mold all made up and ready to go, so let's go ahead and pour the first half of the silicone rubber. Now that we've got the first half of the mold poured, we simply wait overnight until the silicone rubber cures. Alright, so now that we've removed all the Lego bricks, we can 
take this up. Now since this mold is a little bit flatter than the molds I usually work with, I'm going to want to be a little bit careful with it. Just flip that over and start peeling this clay up. And so far so good. And there we go. Looks like the first half of the mold went really, really well. Got a little bit of excess silicone down here to clean up, but overall I actually think it worked out really nicely. So, now we need to put the Legos back around the box and pour the second half of the mold. The second half of the mold is now poured, and once again we wait and let it set overnight. Alright, and now that the second half of the mold has cured, I've removed the Lego bricks and separated the mold. So there we go. We now have two halves that we can use, and now we are finally ready to start with the actual resin casting. Alright, so here I have taken the molds apart, taken the parts out, and as you can see on the top here, I've cut the resin and air channels. And since this is such a flat mold, I've put a uh, kind of sandwiched it between two pieces of cardboard for stability, so that way it doesn't, uh, you know, bend or sag or anything. And then just bound the whole thing up with rubber bands. And to get this thing to stay up during the casting, I'm just going to take two cans of paint and just put it between them like so. Anyway, this is the resin we're going to be using. This is Alumilite's Amazing Clear Cast Resin. And uh, you could just use plain clear resin to make clear effect parts. But Alumilite also sells resin dye. And they sell all kinds of different colors, uh, red, yellow, blue, green, black. And it's the dye itself is translucent, so it will work with either clear or solid resin. So whenever you see, like on the internet, a colored resin kit for sale, that's how they do it, with resin dyes like this. So, all that's left to do now is mix up the resin and pour it into the mold. Here I've mixed up the A part and the B part of the uh, two halves of the clear resin and for the dye the instructions say to add a few drops to the A part. So we'll just... It's actually kind of hard to squeeze it out but Eventually, we'll get some drops in there. And it may take a while, but eventually we'll have some yellow resin here. Well, as it turns out, four drops of dye were enough. Now, it looks kind of orangey right now, uh, but you got to remember I'm going to be adding it to this other half of the resin, so it'll dilute that color a little bit. So I think when they mix the two together, it should be a nice uh, clear yellow. So anyway, this is where the process kind of differs from normal resin casting. Because this clear resin, let's see where the instructions go, there they are. This clear resin cures a bit differently. Uh, mix ratio 1 to 1, just like normal resin. Work time 45 to 50 minutes. With normal resin, your work time is about 60 seconds. <laughs> and demold time. 18 to 24 hours, full cure 7 days, 
this stuff cures extremely slowly. It actually cures even slower than the silicone rubber. So you do not have to be in a hurry for this stuff at all. <clears throat> in fact, it says uh, in the instructions that once you pour the resin into the two separate cups, you ought to, you know, kind of let it sit for a few minutes because get down there you can see those teeny tiny little air bubbles in there where I uh, mix the dye in so you gotta it says let it sit for three minutes for the, all those bubbles to rise and pop and then uh, once again after you mix the two parts together it says let it sit for three minutes to let all the bubbles rise and pop before you even get around to pouring it into the mold so this is a very very slow process so there's no need to rush at all and the instructions say to pour the two halves of the resin together and mix them very very slowly and gently trying to mix as little air into the resin as possible and it says in the instructions to mix it for a full three minutes so that's what I'm going to do So I've mixed up the resin, two halves together, let it sit for a few minutes to let all the bubbles kind of rise to the top, and now we are finally ready to pour into the mold. And I'm going to be honest, I'm actually kind of nervous, because this is my very first attempt at casting with clear resin. Seems a little bit thicker than normal resin, but I think if I just take it slow and don't rush, it should turn out okay. Whew! Yeah. Definitely going to have to take this slow, a lot slower than with normal resin. Alright, now that the resin has had ample time to set, about 24 hours. We're ready to undo this mold and take a look at our results. Alright, let's get this cardboard out of the way. And there we go. All of the parts that were once solid have now been successfully recast in clear yellow resin. There's quite a bit of flash on here. Not sure if it's really showing up on camera, but this kind of yellow tint to the silicone is actually a thin layer of clear yellow resin. So a bit more flash than uh, usually what you usually see on solid resin, but that's easily cleaned up with a hobby knife. Just as long as there are no major bubbles, which I don't see, I think we have successfully recast these parts in clear yellow. Alright, and after cleaning up all of the flash and excess resin, this is what the parts finally start looking like. Nice clear yellow parts as they should be. I'm actually really really happy with the way these turned out. I think they turned out great. In fact the only thing I really plan to do to them after this is uh, they've... the resin casting is such a precise copying uh, procedure that it's even copied the texture of the spray paint that I used on these parts. So I think uh, after these parts cure completely, I'm going to spray over them with a gloss top coat to make them nice and shiny, and uh, I think that'll make them look a little bit uh, clearer. Now, even though these parts have hardened a bit, and I've removed them from the mold, uh, here are the instructions. It says to uh, wait 24 hours before removing, the f removing them from the mold, and I have done that. 
but uh, it says here full cure seven days so it's going to take an entire week for these to cure completely as you can see they are still a little flexible that's no problem we can just bend them right back in place so I'm not really going to be able to do very much with these for about a week uh, until they cure completely but for now for the purposes of this video I can go ahead and show them off to you again there they are compared to the originals the beam saber is especially floppy as you can see it's bending under its own weight all I gotta do is just flatten that back out and as you saw a minute ago the clear yellow beam tomahawk and I just wanted to show it off with the Sotheby's beam sword axe thing and there we go clear yellow beam effect part like it should have been instead of clear green so there you go and that's how you do different colored beam effect parts uh, like I said this can be applied to pretty much any beam effect part you want to use it on be it a uh, a normal beam saber like for example maybe you wanted purple beam sabers there's not that many Gundams that come with purple beam sabers you could always uh, recap make a mold of the beam saber blade and then use you know a combination of red and blue dye to make purple clear resin and there you go you got purple beam sabers as many as you need so uh, I guess that about does it really happy with the way these turned out and I think this was overall a successful tutorial. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.